Well, good morning. My name is, uh, as Scott said, uh, well, you call him Pastor Rick, uh, or just Rick. And uh, I'm the pastor of Community Church of Cutting, but I'm also the senior evangelist of Humble Heart Ministries, which is located in the Northeast, but uh, it's an international ministry. And I've been in that ministry for 25 years. <coughs> And, uh, but I'm happy to come and share with you this morning. And Pastor Mike, I was message of showing us who Jesus is by his love and how he died for us and through God's word, what we know about him. Uh, still, in our world, uh, there are many different beliefs on who Jesus is. And so I would ask, before I begin, I would like to read one scripture for you to really think about and to ponder it in your mind is not only uh, today or this morning when I do this uh, uh, message here or teaching time, but also throughout the day. And here's the scripture. This is in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus, uh, well I'll read this, verses 13 through 18. It says, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he began asking his disciples, saying, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, well, some say John the Baptist, <clears throat> others Jeremiah, but still others uh, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon by John, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not overpower it. The gates of hell shall not overpower it. He's going to build what he's going to call his church. So the church, the Christian church, is built on this faith. Faith and the doctrine of believing that he is the Son of God, which was revealed to Peter, and he said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven has done it. So this message, this is the heart of the message of wondering. Who is Jesus Christ to you? And the way through foggy religion is what I titled this today. The way through foggy religion, because there's much fog when you think about religions in our world today. But the most important thing I want you each to remember, too, or think about, it, it doesn't matter what I say or what anybody else says to you, or your mom and your dad or your brother or sister or friends, someday, each one of us, including me, are going to walk up before the throne of God. And Jesus is going to be on that throne. And this is the question he's going to ask you and me. Who do you say that I am? That's some Jehovah's Witness friends. Who I used to do a lot of dialogue when they go to people's houses. And I said to them, they believe, which I'll be showing you, that Jesus is also called Michael the Archer. Right? I said, when we go before God's throne, when Jesus is on that throne, I don't want to be standing next to you if you say his name is Michael. So that's just an example that I just like to say. I want you to keep that in your mind. That's the question each of, us have to, each of us have to answer all the time. Who is Jesus Christ to you, to me? And who do you say that Jesus is? So I'd like to start first. How many here know what Muslims are. You've heard about Muslims, right? Everybody's heard about Muslims. How about Jehovah's Witnesses? Anybody ever had Jehovah's Witnesses? Come here, okay. How about Mormons? Anybody know about Mormons? Okay. Christian Science? Unitarianism? Unity? Okay. Let's start first by taking a 
bucket. I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but I'm just going to click the next slide. Okay, this, of course, are Muslims. And I would just show a picture here. This is a t-shirt. Look at the shirt that these people wear uh, concerning the United States. This is their t-shirt showing World Trade Center 9-11. Now, how many remember 9-11? You don't remember a lot of see this is what's, what's need, what needs to be shown today in our churches and in our schools because a lot of you weren't around or weren't old enough to know when this happened and who it was that did it. But the Quran is their holy book, and this is what they think about Christians. But we're going to focus today on what they believe and what others believe about Jesus Christ. That's our main focus. There's many, many, many things about these different religions and cults. But we're just going to focus on the difference between what we believe as Christians and what they believe about Jesus Christ. Well, first of all, hey, thanks. Uh, Muslims, now these quotes I'm taking, you can go on the internet if you want, but there's an official uh, Muslim writer who, who speaks for Islam. All right, and this is him. His name is Dr. Hekmet Bashir. He's a Muslim. And this is his writing. This is his quotes and his words. The blue is his words. Muslims respect and revere Jesus. Peace be upon him. Make sure you know. Anybody who's dead, that's what the Muslims say. Peace be upon him. And they consider somebody dead. They consider him one of the greatest of God's messengers to mankind. The Quran confirms his virgin birth, and the chapter of the Quran is entitled Mary. Means Mary. The Quran describes the birth of Jesus as follows. Remember when the angel said, Oh Mary, God gives you good news of a word from him, God, whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, revered in this world and the hereafter, and one of those brought near to God. He will speak to the people from his cradle and as a man, and he is of the righteous. She said, My Lord, how can I have a child when no mortal has touched me? He said, He said, So it will be. God creates what He wills. If He decrees a thing, He says to it only, Be. And it is. That's the Quran. That's their holy book. The Quran. So that's their explanation of the virgin birth. Now, if you said to a Muslim, Do you believe in the virgin birth of Jesus? They're going to say yes, because of that quote we just read. Okay. See, there's no better way to understand and make the comparison and difference between one religion or another than to quote their own publications, quote their own writings, and that's what we're doing here. It says, Jesus was born miraculously by the command of God, the same command that had brought Adam into being with neither a father nor a mother. God has said the case of Jesus with God is like the case of Adam. He created him from dust, and then he said to him, Be, and he, he came into be. Quran, chapter 3, verse 59. Of course, Quran says surah instead of chapter. Okay, let's, make, let's think about this just for a minute. What does that mean? They just described, and their belief is that God created Jesus. That the Father created Jesus just like he created Adam in the dust. So therefore, to them, Jesus already received cannot be God. And he says, during this prophetic mission, Jesus performed many miracles. God tells us that Jesus said, I have come to you with the sign from your Lord. I make for you the shape of a bird out of clay. I breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by God's permission. I heal the blind from birth and the leper, and I bring the dead to life by God's permission. And I tell you what you eat and what you store in your houses, Quran. Jesus says, or they're quoting Jesus as saying that I do this with God's permission. In other words, taking away his deity, taking away the fact that we're going to learn our Bible says that Jesus was there in creation. In fact, Jesus is our creator. Next one gives us Muslims believe that Jesus was 
not crucified. It was a plan of Jesus sent it. In other words, remember, this is, these are not my words. This is something he wrote as who was representing his form. He said it was the plan of Jesus' enemies to crucify him, but God saved him and raised him up to him, raised him up to him. And the likeness of Jesus was put over on another man. Jesus' enemies took this man and crucified him, thinking that he was Jesus. God has said, they said, we killed the Messiah Jesus, son of Mary, messenger of God. They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but the likeness of him was put on another man, and they killed that man. Ever heard of that before? Are you staying with me? Or are you, yeah. are you okay? So what that means is they're saying, they're saying right out front, blatantly, that Jesus really didn't die on the cross. That, and this is a, there was a, a there was cult back then in Jesus' time who had the same teaching. As a matter of fact, you know, anybody who's agnostic, Gnosticism shows too that this was not Jesus who died. In fact, we won't get into all that. Gnosticism means they don't even believe anything that's physical, that you can touch it, that nothing can be holy. So Jesus couldn't have been holy, that's what they believe. But they're substituting Christ. Epicureanism is another religion that taught this. And Paul had to battle this. That they were saying, well, Christ really didn't die on the cross. His spirit was put on another man. In fact, some of them say it was Simon. Remember, you remember the story of Jesus with the cross and how he was on his way to Golgotha to be crucified and a man came and helped him named Simon? They say that his spirit went on him. And so Simon really died on the cross. So the Muslims are teaching the same thing. Neither Muhammad nor Jesus came to change the basic doctrine of the belief one God brought by earlier prophets, but rather to confirm and renew it. Same doctor, I'm just continuing on. Quote, Muslims believe that the Holy Spirit is a title given to the angel Gabriel, pronounced in Arabic as Gabriel. So we believe that the angel Gabriel and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. We certainly do not believe that the Holy Spirit is divine, nor part of the Trinity, Christians believe. There you go. So let's make one thing. Make sure you understand one thing. Do they believe the same Jesus we do? They don't. Do they believe in the same Holy Spirit we believe in? No. They can't because they just said the Holy Spirit is not God. The Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. Muslims believe in one unique, incomparable, incomparable God who has no son nor partner and that none has the right to be worshipped but him alone. He is the true God, and every other deity is false. He has the most magnificent names and sublime perfect attributes. No one shares his divinity nor his attributes. In the Quran, God describes himself, saying, He is God, the one, God to whom the creators turn, I'm sorry, the creatures turn for their needs. He begets not, nor was he begotten, and there is none like him. So that pretty much wipes out God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They believe in one God named Allah. You follow me so far? You're not going to sleep, are you? No, far away. God is not Jesus. There it is, straight up. Representative for Muslims today says God is not Jesus. And Jesus is not God. Even Jesus himself rejected this. God has said in the Quran, indeed they have dis disbelieved who, who have said, God is the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. The Messiah said, children of Israel, worship God, my Lord, and your Lord. Whoever associates partners in worship with God, then God has forbidden paradise for him, and his home is the fire hell. <clears throat> for the wrongdoers, there will be no helpers. The Quran. God is not a trinity. God has said to the Quran, said in the Quran. Indeed, they disbelieve who say God is the third of the three in Trinity. When there is no God but one God. If they if they desist not from what they say, truly a painful, a painful punishment will befall the disbelievers among them. Would they not 
rather repent to God and ask his forgiveness. For God is all forgiving, most merciful. The Messiah Jesus, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. Kareem. Now you start to get the picture of why they cannot contend, they cannot unite the Christianity, the Muslims. Those who follow the Quran cannot accept or participate with anything Christian. Now there's those who those who don't follow their Quran uh, religiously or faithfully that would allow a variance there. And those are the ones that are probably more peaceful. But if they follow the Quran, now there's other verses I'm not going to get into because we don't have time and I want to stay focused on who, what the difference is with Jesus. But they, and the Quran says, you see a Christian, kill him. You see a Jew, kill him. They're infidels. That's what the Quran teaches. And that's why our world is so full of these people who definitely hate Christianity. Now, so in a, in a nutshell, Jesus was only a man, only a man like Moses, Noah, Isaiah, not Pastor Noah, a messenger. He died like the others. So to them, Jesus Christ is dead. He was a good man, a good prophet, a good messenger. So, you haven't, are you following so far in Muslims? Is there any doubt in your mind when you're talking now next time or when you turn on a TV? And they say, well, we pretty much do the same thing. See, because I know school textbooks, which I've argued with in different schools, say that the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims all worship the same God. The textbook says it. And when you mark your test questions and you say, no, they do not believe the same God, you're going to get the answer wrong. So you need to tell your parents, you need to tell your pastors or whatever, you need to go to that school and challenge them and say, we do not believe this. You do not worship the same God. In other words, <clears throat> let's say that we had a picture of Jesus on the wall over here. And Jesus is God. He's the God the Son to us. We would have to say, if we want to believe like Muslims, we would have to look at that picture of Jesus and say, that's all. But we can't do that. And we don't do that. Because we do not believe in the Muslim God. So now let's take a look at the Jehovah's Witness God. Now I once was a Jehovah's Witness many years ago. And I got saved while I was working on a church steeple. And I became a Christian. And God put me on a mission. Like I say, it's been 25 years of ministry helping people get out of cults and teaching like I'm doing today to show the difference between what we believe as Christians and what other religions teach about Jesus Christ. Let's take a look. The Watchtower Bible Tract Society, also known as Holy Witnesses, <laughs> was about to give you a number of 7,659,000 or whatever, uh, perhaps about 4 million in the United States of their members. 109,000 congregations, 236 lands, territories, about 19, 000, 19 million attend an annual, like a communion, each year. And that's how you can base who they are. And you can find all this information on their official website. And, just to know, they have an estimated 500,000 missionaries out. That's why we all know them when they come knocking door to door. What do they believe about Jesus? Why did I have to leave? Why do I not agree with Jehovah's Witnesses? Because this is who they believe Jesus is. The greatest man who ever lived. Christ is God's son and inferior to him. John 13, 17, 13. Christ was first of God's creation. Colossians 1, 15. You know, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, I'll just quote them first. So you probably don't have a Bible with you. Do uh, you have a Bible with you here? Let's take a look at John. You don't have, this is John chapter 17, verse 3 is what they quote. Let's take a look at that. It says, now Jesus is praying here. The, the disciples are gathered around and Jesus is praying. He says, oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm going to lose. I was thinking that 
think it's not where I want to but I want to read okay. And this is the eternal life. That they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. They just take that verse and pull it out of there and say, see? See, because Jesus is praying to the Father here. It starts out in verse 1. He says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that the son, thy Son may glorify thee. And he says this comment about the only true God. And if you took that verse just there, just that verse 3, you could actually say, well, I guess you're right. That he says that the Father is the only one true God. But look at the next verse. I glorify thee on the earth, having accomplished the work which thou hast given me to do. And now, Glorify thou me together with thyself, Father, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Think about that verse that follows that. You see, they pull out of context. It says that he was always been with God before the world was. He was with God, which you can't be with God or a part of God, and not be God. Anyways, that's what they use. In Colossians 1.15, I'll quote, let's quote that too. This is a good one here, Colossians 1.15, because these are the ones you'll be challenged with. If somebody comes to your door, or you have a friend who is a Jehovah's Witness, uh, this is a verse that they'll tell you. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. It says in He, meaning Jesus, and He, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. It says, and He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. There it is. See, their point. It just said that He's the image of the invisible God. The firstborn. The firstborn says of all creation. Now, if you just stop right there and you don't read any further in the scripture, then they could take that and say, oh, the right in which they did to me and many other people to baffle us, to, to, to trick us, to, to deceive us into believing that they are Christians. But look what the rest of the verse says. For by him all, think of that word, by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all, you hear that word, all, all. <laughs> things have been created by him and for him. And he is before all things. In him all things hold together stop there. See, you can't be before all things and not be the creator, can you? You can't. No one can be before all things and not be the one that created. They took that out, that word, and put all other things in their own Bible version. But what Pastor Mike was teaching about Christ and what he does for us when he did on the cross, look at that verse Verse 17. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus Christ is God the Son. That pew you're sitting in is held together because of him. The air we breathe is held together because of him. All things that are created, all things hold together in him. He has to be the creator. So, I can't refuse each one, but I got scriptures for you. But we'll, I'll keep moving because we want to. Jesus or Christ died on a stake, not a cross. Christ's human life was paid as a ransom for obedient humans. Christ's one sacrifice was sufficient. Christ was raised from the dead as an immortal spirit person. His body was vaporized. Christ's presence is in spirit. They deny the body resurrection 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, God spun him and created him like the Muslims believe into different people. But look at the heat, that's how that's in their books there. And I have a whole library of all these books I can quote from. But I believe that he was died on a stake. Until one night when I was on that church steeple. And God was was hitting me up there. And I imagined and I thought about it. And what was happening, I was pounding these nails. And every time I pound a nail, it would just step them down across the top of the roof off. And what got me was that noise in my ear hearing that. And I thought about Jesus having nails driven through his hands, his wrist, and how that would have felt. And when I thought about it, and I couldn't get it off my mind several days later, it took me two weeks to finally go out and pray and say, Lord, I know what you call me. I don't know your name, but I give up. I surrender to you. But I saw his hands nailed to the cross. Not like this. And then history and the scriptures can prove that too. That after Mike quoted John 20, 28, when Thomas was doubting, he said, Blessed are those who do not see but yet believe. But he said, Reach here and put your fingers, touch the nail prints. In my hands, plural. To have a nail print in your hand, prints, plural, both hands would have to be nailed. You see? God's word is so accurate that even those things can be picked out when there's cults and false religions in the world. Okay, and Jesus is also called Michael the Archangel. Michael means God-like. Jesus Christ is a God but not Almighty God. Jesus returned invisibly to the earth in 1914 and resided over the world headquarters of the Watchtower of Bible Society. That same year, 1914, the devil Satan was kicked out of heaven, which caused World War I. <laughs> Jesus will never appear again in bodily form. They don't have the hope. They don't have the hope we have that Jesus is going to return physically. So we had enough about Jehovah's Witnesses. And I, if I have time, I'll answer some questions. But let's move on to the Mormons. You know, when I was young and zealous, after I got saved, I used to run up and down the streets chasing Jehovah's Witnesses door to door. <laughs> tell them that they were wrong. <laughs> I spent my Saturdays chasing them up and down town. <laughs> then I, they go to open the door and I run up between them. Hey, before you listen to what they have to say, let me tell you what they really teach. And of course, it just made them want to hate me all the more. They just hated me with a passion. So I had to learn to slow down a little bit and back up. But I was having, I had an answered prayer and I was thanking the Lord one day in the church where I was at. And I was downstairs in a place called the Playroom and I just Prayer room. Prayer room. Prayer room there, too. And I said, Lord, just let me serve. Give me what I need to do. Show me the way. Show me what else you want me to do. I know about the Jehovah's Witnesses. I thank you for getting out of there. I can. I love them. I've got family, friends, relatives. I need to get, you know, get after, get to them. Thanks for helping me. Thanks for answering prayer. And I got up and walked out of that place and went across the street. Walked right straight into two more missionaries. And for two years, I studied soul religion with the Mormon missionaries, and I went to the Mormon church. And I learned all about what they teach. And I told them up front, I'm a Christian, but I want to see what you believe firsthand. So that I could stand before you here today, and have been for many years, to say, this is what they believe. And no, I can show you exactly what they believe. We know that the founder of Joseph Smith, huge cult. One of the most powerful cults and religions in the world. 14 million worldwide. 8 million are in the United States. First was Joseph Smith, the founder. He got beat up, kicked around. They had their crazy religion. They got pushed west. Brigham Young took over out of Utah. That's the best way to say it. 
And that's how it happened. Now let's see what they believe. Let's focus on what they believe about Jesus. Now, this has been this is right now on their website. And this this is tainted. Because they've had the education through the years of people like me and others who will quote them and show that they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. But this is how they write it. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, the Father, in the flesh. In the flesh. Notice that? In the flesh. In the flesh. That's what he says. He was the creator. He is our Savior. And he will be the, our judge. That's pretty much what we believe, isn't it? When you, when you get that far. Under the direction of our Heavenly Father, under the direction of our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ created the earth. Through his suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, and by giving his life on the cross, that is, by performing the atonement. See, these are all doctored up, because they used to have to kill each other, or kill somebody, so you could have atonement, because you didn't believe the way they did. So they've rephrased all their doctrines now. Jesus Christ saves us from our sins as we follow him. So that's what they believe there. Now let's take a look closer. Mormons teach that Jesus is the spirit brother of Lucifer. Do you know who Lucifer is? They teach that Jesus was married to at least three women and fathered many children of which Joseph Smith is a descendant. Obviously, you must believe that Joseph Smith is God's prophet or you cannot be a Mormon. <laughs> God, who is, according to the Mormon, God, who God is, according to Mormonism, can be summed up on phrase. Man is, God once was. Who well, God is, man can become. You can become a God. These people become gods. Come to your door. Or, you know, Mitt Romney, he's going to become a God. And, he, and that's what they do. In Mormon prophetic history, Jesus will return to Independence, Missouri, which they call the city of Zion, uh, after the United States government is overthrown by the Mormon Church. That's what they believe. That's what they're for prophets, they're writers. But think about this before you before you think it's far fetched. Do you guys have any idea how many Mormons are there, are in the United States government? Do you have any idea what the Mormons own? They own U.S. trade. They own all the beef just about that anybody gets in our country. All the world communications with dialogues for languages are centered at Utah, where they can have foreigners come in there. Credit cards, airlines, foreigners come in and they can get their dialogue and their languages within a half hour. They can have somebody that speaks their language. The Mormons have all trained for that. So we don't, you don't even realize how much they do influence. My wife worked for Mormons for a while. It's called Sedesco, Marriott Hotels. They own all those things. But that's what they believe. That's not what you see on the commercials, is it? That Jesus was married. Can you believe they said that about our God? But that's what they teach. Now, on the news, and I know in other places too, they are not willing to say that Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult. But how can we say that they're Christians when they deny who Jesus Christ is? That's why we learn the difference between us. That God's given us his word to prove who he is. All right, how about uh, Unitarians? Does anybody know who Unitarians are? Unitarians, are, they're the nuclear free zone people. But Unitarians, well, that's some a little bit about them, they're, how they're founded up through the years. They're very, there's a, there's many Unitarians in our government. And then people who just don't, I would say, ultra-liberal. Let's find out what they believe. Who is Jesus the Unitarian? We do not believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, performed miracles, and was resurrected from the dead. We do not, we do admire the, and respect the way he lived, the power of his love, the force of his, of his example, and the system of values. Most Unitarian Universalists regard Jesus as one of several important moral and ethical teachers who have shown humans how to live a life of love, service, and compassion. Though some of us may question whether Jesus was actual, was an actual historical figure, we believe his teachings are of significant moral value. 
This is why they can talk that way. Since there is no way to know for sure if we go any place when we die, very few, if any, of us believe in the physical existence of a place called heaven or hell. Since we believe in neither original sin nor hell, we do not feel a need to be saved from either. Millions of people are in Unitarian Universalists. They welcome earth worship. You're welcome to go to the Unitarian Church, you just can't be critical of what they teach. So the Unitarian Universalists, well, if you don't live over where there, those churches exist, you probably wouldn't know much about them. Then there's the Christian Science. You ever heard of the Christian Science Monitor? No. That's a newspaper, and you know. Well, they believe Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy is the founder of that. Jesus is the human man, Christ. And Christ is a divine idea. If there had not ever existed such a person as the Galilean prophet, it would make no difference to me. That's what she writes. So do they, are, are, science, are Christian science Christian? No. Unitarians aren't, universalists aren't Christian either. What about unity? Does anybody know who unity is? No. Unity Village USA or Unity Church of Christianity? Uh, there's unity churches over in Edinburgh and over in those areas in the community. Unity uh, teaches that Jesus represents God's idea of man expression. In expression, Christ is that idea, the absolute. In other words, really, the Christian science too. And by the way, you know what these people also deny? Pain. They say that there's no pain. It's, it's just uh, imagination. And that's why they're self-healing and all that. So that's the unity school. It's called unity. How about the Unification Church? The Moonies. Anybody ever heard of them? Unification Church. How about the Washington Times? Probably heard of that. Well, they. this is Sung Young Moon and his wife. Now, what they teach, that little figure of the people falling over him, got Jesus right there, the second Adam. you got Adam over here on the left. His, uh, Adam fell in a sinful, made the sinful world. He was the first Adam. They called Jesus the second Adam. He restored the original world. He was the second Adam. Now, Sung Young Moon calls himself the third Adam. And the reason he called himself the third Adam is because Jesus is not God. Jesus failed to accomplish his mission that God sent him to complete. Moon fulfilled the mission. How did Moon fulfill the position? Some young Moon fulfilled this mission because this man, these people used to be called the Moonies. They would show up at Air Force with flowers and stuff. See, some young Moon taught that since Jesus didn't get married, he didn't fulfill God's mission for the man, for people. So therefore, this man has been known, if you look him up in the encyclopedia or wherever, for marrying thousands of people at the same time, refigurinas, or he does a marriage, thousands of people, because he's fulfilling what Jesus didn't do, he says. Well, he died. And I hate to see where he went. He died just last year, a couple of years ago. So that's the unification. Nobody says about Jesus went the way of the cross, not with resounding joy. That kind of throws a damper on Pastor Mike's presentation, doesn't it? That he went, that Jesus went the way of the cross without resounding joy. He went there for our sins, and we have great joy. And he was, and he came, he, he did what he just accomplished with his Father. And so it was joy. And we have joy because he did it. So there's a false Called. These are what's called doctrines of demons. When you hear these things, this is what's called doctrines of demons. They teach against who Christ is. Now, how about these people? You had to heard of them. Scientology? Tom Cruise? Scientology. Church of Scientology. This is John Travolta. This is what they teach. Jesus, one of many great teachers, but merely a legend from millions of years ago. They have nothing, you know, they're calling themselves the Church of Scientology is only to get tax exemption. 
In fact, their leader, their founder, they still today can't have meetings on American soil or any country. They have all their meetings out in the ocean. In the ocean. Oh yeah, out on ships. Because they're, it's illegal some of the stuff they do. And they fight and they boycott countries if they don't allow them in. Because some, like Germany and other ones, said, you're not a Christian. We're not going to let you have a tax exemption and say you're a church. Because you're not a church to us. Well, then they didn't let the movies go there. So Germany finally says, okay, you're a church. And they let them have the tax exemption. You'll find a lot of this stuff of religion comes down to money. A lot of it. It's, it is confusing. Well, it is confusing. The, yeah. when, you, when you get in the world, when you get the religions of the world, when you get outside of our Christianity, it is. It should be confusing. Right? So you would say to yourself, I'm confused. Let me go look where to find the answer. The Bible. Because it can confuse you, for sure. All right, let's get down to the basics now, all right? Let's get down to how do you talk to these people? How do you deal with them? Here's a response. Let's, look, let's just think about this. We believe, Jesus, first of all, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that the Bible, we should go out to armor ourselves with the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit is the Bible. Paul, the Apostle Paul, calls it that. So the sword of the Spirit. We believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, without human father, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, the only Savior of mankind. We believe that he is equal with God in all things, that he died and rose again bodily. If you go away here today and you think about the doctrine of who Jesus is and what the scriptures teach, that other worlds or other world religions are different than us, what did I just say there? about his resurrection from the grave. What's important to know bodily? Because Thomas touched him, right? Other people, in Luke chapter 24, he ate fish. And they touched him there too. He says, hey look, a spear does not have flesh and bone. Alright. We believe that he, by the grace of